going to start a conversation on You Can Create Change. We just got finished watching uh, Ed Milet's interview with Christine Simmons, the COO and president of the LA Sparks WNBA team. Uh, I'm going to throw it to Chad first and see what, what Chad has to say, because I don't want Tay to take all the sports references and then basically Chad and I are left with nothing. So I figure I'd just give you an opportunity to get your, your stuff in there first, Chad. I appreciate that, man. So I'm, I'll just blast through a few things here first. You know, the first thing, just a few things that stuck out for me. The first thing was that when she was at that place in life where she just had that mindset I, I can relate so much because she was like if I want to make six figures I got to be a doctor or a lawyer and it just reminded me of how we have that script you know and how as we're as we're growing up there's certain things that we think like if we want to be successful it looks like this or it looks like this and then of course we find uh, uh, one of my favorite pictures I've ever seen in network marketing is, is uh, two guys one's a doctor one's a lawyer they're shaking hands and they say we're just scratching our heads how our wives make more money from their phones at home than we do. <laughs> I just love, I love that because that's what being an entrepreneur allows and, and allows us to have. So that one, she's talking about liking the power, not the fame and not needing to be a politician to make real lasting true change. And I think that's so important. The power allows you to make the impact. Um, knowing your effect in a room, that's a whole skill set in itself is just knowing our audience, knowing who we're talking to, understanding who they are so that we can meet them where they are, connect with them where they are, help them go on a journey to where they want to go and where we know it would benefit them to go. That's a, if, if, if people can just grasp that concept right there of just understanding people and knowing where they are, um, then, then, cause like she said, there's a different version, you know, if we're, there's one version here, it's not that we're different people. It's just, how we communicate with people. Like I communicate with my kids differently than I communicate with my wife or that I communicate with my friends. And so it's just knowing, it's knowing our audience, um, bringing your best work to the table, bringing your A game. And I just wrote down here, preparation leads to confidence. And I think in a business like this, we have to be intentional about putting ourselves out there in those situations that cause us to have to bring our A game when you get in the routine and you get into the habits, you just kind of can go through life on autopilot. There's no growth that's happening in autopilot. So when we put ourselves out there in positions where we have to prepare and we have to bring our A game, you know, like, like uh, doing a, uh, of course, this is the, the, the time of, you know, social distancing and staying away from people. Right. But whenever we're able to have people in our house again, it's, it's just being intentional and saying, you know what, I'm going to get offline for a second. I'm going to do a party. I'm going to go to someone's house. I'm going to put on a training for my team. I'm going to do a retreat and just putting ourselves out there so that we have to become excellent. I think that's huge. Um, building allies. Who do you know that I need to know? You know, we talk about this all the time, like getting around people, uh, having lunch with people. You know, we had Glenn Morshower on here a couple of weeks ago and I get to meet him tomorrow in, in the person. And I'm just like, what? And it's just, I, I get, I hear this from John Maxwell all the time. John Maxwell still buys lunch every single month for somebody to stretch himself and grow himself. And you never know, like she had the courage to walk up, you know, to Magic Johnson and just ask, right. And just introduce herself. And that led to this whole new life. And so for any of us, it's, it's, don't ever feel like so, anyone's above you to just reach out and ask them for a little bit of their time, because you'll be surprised how many yeses you'll get. You know, and John Maxwell, when he wanted to become a pastor, he reached out to the 10 pastors with the biggest churches. They didn't know who he was. And he just said, hey, can I, can I pay you 100 bucks and meet with you? And eight said no, and two said yes, and those became his mentors. You and I have that same opportunity to get around people like that. Um, speaking passionately, you know, smiling a lot. I think that's so important. It disarms people. You know, whenever we smile, I, love, I first learned that in uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Because you can go to and, and, and look at the most nasty negative person, smile at them, and it just disarms them. Usually they smile back. Tell your face that we're excited to be here. I love how, how she said that. Tell your face that you're excited to be here. Um, one, person, one conversation with one person can change everything. Just shot of that. I love she, two of her favorite words she used to this a lot was create and activate. Create and activate. Those are action words. 
we got to go through every single day taking action because at the end of the day, if you want to be successful, it takes a whole lot of action, a whole lot of grind, a whole lot of work. And the last thing I'll say is that even where she is now, as a COO and president, she still is convincing herself that she belongs. So if you're convincing yourself that you belong and you don't have the, the stuff yet, just understand you're still gonna do it when you get there. You're still gonna have days of doubt. There's still gonna be a mental battle that's gonna happen all the time. I'm sure some days Joel even wakes up and goes, man, how did I get here? Will I be able to stay here? Is this just a, a season? Is it all going to disappear? You know, because there's this guy called the enemy and he's always trying to rob, kill and destroy. And just look it up. It's in John 10, 10. And it's, he's always going to be working on us, looking for a crack in our armor, looking for an angle. And so it's, it's kind of encouraging actually to me to know that this woman who's extremely successful is still convincing herself that she belongs, still fighting the imposter syndrome. So you know, I love when, when he started asking, what, what are some common traits that, that mega achievers have? And it's freakish drive and competitiveness and being a workhorse and having a, a, a big heart, being relentless, reinventing yourself. And so those things, we hear that the same stuff from all the people, right? It's, it's the same thing over and over. So Joel, that's what I got for today, man. And thanks for introducing us to another amazing human. Absolutely. All right. So uh, I guess, Tay, you can take the rest of the stuff and I'll just tell everybody goodbye after you're done talking. So I, I know you took some amazing notes because all I saw Tay doing during this video was and then head down writing, nodding and writing. So I can't wait to see what you took down. Yeah, this was awesome. I think for me, it was awesome from the standpoint of I've always known about the NBA, uh, but I always saw it as just another basketball, another sport. And I just love hearing it from her perspective and how she was like, you have to innovate, create, activate, and then you have to be relentless. And I love the fact that she was like, you know, like you have to think about sports. You have in California, you have LA Lakers, you have LA Clippers, you have LA Dodgers. And it's not just a sports team. This is Laker Nation. This is Clipper Nation. This is Dodger Nation. These people are loyal to their organization. So her having an understanding is we're not going to win these people over in sports but we don't have to, but we can get out in the community. We can be innovative and we can become a cause. And I love the, the fact that she was like, you know what? We're a cause first and we're sports organization second. And I just, just, I just love her, her, her perspective on that because I, I became like, I actually want to go and experience one of these things that she was talking about, like at a basketball game, because you're not just going for the game, you're going for the community. And I think if you can welcome people to a community, they, they will be more, more willing to support you uh, in whatever you do. So I just love her her uh, attitude. I love her perspective on that. And I just love the fact that she would just, like when she says like be relentless, like you don't have to just listen to her. You can feel it. Like you can feel like this is a very relentless and confident woman. So uh, this is very powerful. And I think uh, going back to one of the points that I had was uh, what she said she learned from my mom. She said she didn't have to, her mom didn't have to teach her discipline. She modeled it. So everything that she learned, uh, she saw it being happening through her mom. And that's one of the ways that uh, she was able to not just go out and, you know, just talk about these things. She was able to model that behavior. And I think us, it goes back uh, to that quote, you know, people don't do what you say, they do what you do. And I think as leaders within this business, we can reach out and have Zooms and tell our teams what we want them to do all day long. But if you're not doing the step, step to success, you can't expect them to. If you're not showing up to the Zoom calls and to show me the money and, uh, the family call, you can't expect your team. So so you have to be willing to do the things first and lead your team from the front and show them the action uh, before you can actually tell them that. And I think the second thing I got was just the story of her uh, walking up to Magic Johnson. That is, that's like, that is probably one, probably one of the scariest moments that she had in her career. Because not only are you going to just talk to Magic Johnson, but you can imagine the amount of superstars that's in that gym with him that day. So you have to just face your fears. And I think this business we get caught up with, you know, we want to ask people to join this business. We see what they're doing uh, in their normal day to day life, or what jobs they're working and we think they don't need it, but we don't know what's going on behind the scenes. So I think many times you just have to build up the courage to ask these people. You have to build up the courage to, like uh, Chad say, ask somebody out to lunch. Uh, the crazy thing about it to me is successful people want to have lunch. They want to talk about themselves. They want to share their success secrets. And I think many times people don't think they do because they see the title and they see how big they are, but who doesn't love talking about themselves? 
Like if somebody come up and ask me to lunch, I'm gonna tell you about me all day long because I love talking about myself. That's how, how we are as human nature. So I just love the fact that she had that courage from the beginning to actually go and do that. Uh, and third thing that uh, she said, and uh, Chad kind of spoke on this as well, is uh, know your effect on the room. And I just took it a, a little step further, is know your effect in the conversation. Uh, when you're having these conversations with people, whether it's in life or whether it's social media, uh, you, first thing you have to do is listen. Uh, you don't have to create a wheel and just feel like you have to tell a person what they need. If you listen, they will tell you what they need. And all you have to do is to provide that situation, pro provide the solution, and meet them where they are. So I think when you say, like, know your effect on the room, get to know their story. Like, what's going on with the kids right now? What's going on in their marriage? And meet them in that, opposed to trying to sell them something in, in the beginning. Uh, and just the uh, fourth thing, uh, I love the fact she said, Chad touched on this as well, when he said, uh, uh, choose power over fame. And, and I put down choose influence over fame. Influence is way more effective. Influence is going to carry you a lot longer. Influence is going to cause people to do things that they weren't doing before. It's going to allow them to see themselves in a different light. So uh, that really stuck out to me because uh, we live in a social world to nowadays and we build our business socially. So we want to have that influence so that we can let people know and empower people that you are enough. You are made for more. You can and will do the things that people have said you uh, weren't able to do. So we have to be that positive uh, light for them and just go out and kind of leave from the front of that man. And just the last thing, uh, last thing I wanted to share. And uh, he said, you don't get, this is what Ed said, you don't get to where you want to go by hoping and dreaming. And immediately the book that Joel referenced to us uh, a couple months back, it takes what it takes. Uh, and that's probably become one of my favorite books. And I love that because like it literally takes what it takes. If you want to do something, then you have to understand you have to put in the work. And I love the fact that she like, she, like they won the championship and magic was like, well, let's go get another one. And that's just that, that relentless drive that you got to have, like understand the same with this business. Once you hit Ruby, you can't settle for that. You have to go ahead and focus on diamond, emerald and diamond. Once you hit presidential, you have to celebrate in that moment, but then you have to focus on going uh, ambassador. So you have to understand, for me, it's like, that's the momentum. You have, um, this company has amazing momentum right now. And the last thing that you want to do is kill that momentum. Because I understand within a sports organization, like, you're only going to be great for so long. You're only going to have these people buying into this one division for so long before you lose them, before new new players start to come in for it. The uh, culture begins to shape because people grow old uh, within sports. People retire. Just different things happen with your business. Things happen in people's lives where they might not be in that same season. So once you're in that momentum, you have to continue to keep your gas on the pedal. You have to continue to run with that momentum and don't kill it because that's the last thing you want to do. So uh, just so much good I got out of this. I had never heard of her before uh, today. So just thank you for sharing this, Joe, because I just got so much. And for me, it was like kind of changing my perspective with the whole basketball deal. Like I'm not going to become a sports, a Sparks fan because of basketball. Like I, I know the people behind the organization. I know what their heart is. I know what their cause is. And I just, last thing, I just love the fact that she said we want to empower women, but we want to enlighten men. And me being honest, I wasn't enlightened. I just thought basketball was basketball. I never thought the fact that well, this is fundamental. This is teaching kids fundamental. This is team ball. And this, I think it's so many uh, opportunities, so many things that we can learn, not just from the basketball standpoint, but the life standpoint, and just teaching people how to be disciplined, how to go and go out and not make everything about yourself. Go How to go out and just literally have a team and learn how to build a team and do the things that you need to do to make the team successful opposed to yourself. So uh, this was a great one for me. And like I said, she enlightened me on a lot. And I just love her personality and her drive, man, because she just kind of pushed me to be like, you know what? I can do this, and I'm going to go out and make it happen. So uh, thanks for sharing this one, Joe. This one was a good one, man. Yeah, absolutely. The thing, the thing that was funny, and I looked up a couple times, and I saw all three of us. This, this goes back to the smiling part is I could see us smiling, all three of us, during the interview because she was smiling as she was answering a question because it's contagious. So guys, make sure that you have that contagious personality. There's a difference between being contagious and infectious. You want to be contagious where people are, are drawn to you. You don't want to be infectious where you're forcing something on somebody that causes them to have a negative reaction to you. The great thing that she was doing was she was truly talking about leading by action, not leading by speaking into things. Um, the first thing that she started out with though, that really was quite impressive was, you know, she was actually admitting some of her failures for the first time. 
but she put it in a perspective that she had to have the multiple failures so that it could direct her path to where God ultimately needed her to go. So if you are in the midst of those failures, you know, when I look back at myself and Stephanie, we had to go to those failures so God could bring us to where he needed us to be. So sometimes the stuff that you're going through isn't a bad thing. It may feel like it in the moment, but then obviously hindsight is twenty twenty. You look back and you go, oh, okay, God, now it all makes sense. So make sure that you embrace where you're at and know that it's only a season in time. That's why there are seasons because seasons come and season goes. And like Tay said, in sports, you can't have a winning season year after year after year after year. It's just really hard. If that was, there would be some dynasties that just went for 15 to 20 years without ever losing a championship. And there just, it, there isn't one of those in history. You have to ask or the answer is always no. How many times have we guys said, we've said that to you guys? You know, this is an ask, 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 ask. Uh, something that I've got written in really big here is your entire life is sales. I don't want to sell. I don't like selling. Well, right there, you're selling me on the reason why you don't want to be in sales and you don't like sales. Your entire life is sales. The moment you take a breath of air from being born, you're announcing to the world that you are selling you are hungry, you are cranky, you know, that is how life is, learn to embrace that. Uh, and then the other thing that I had written super large underneath that is smiles change everything. I would say hugs change everything too, but this current client, you know, it's really weird to try and hug people, so just go with the smile. Uh, the other great thing that she said was never stop learning, never stop pushing. That was the biggest takeaway that she had from Magic Johnson is that he is always disciplined in learning and pushing. You can't buy the will to win. It has to be within you. Guys, is that something that you have inside of you? That relentless, this, she said that word like 500 times, relentless drive. You know, the reason that we're able to do what we do is because of the relentless drive. Stephanie's drive is so relentless. She is, a, I would say, WNBA star. I mean, that is her, her whole drive and her whole relentless pursuit is designed not only to push us further, but to help push you and bring you along further than you could actually ever go by yourself. That is, that is what true leadership is, is empowering others through your actions so that they can go further and in a direction better than they would if they went on their own. And that's what we're doing here with this group is we're so, so, so concerned with helping you max out you. You know, I love that that's what Ed Milet calls everything that he does, maxing out, because we want you to be the best you you can possibly be, because when you're the best you, you can change the world. Uh, where was it? It was, it was so awesome the way that she said it. Uh, everything, you, you have to realize that everything is bigger than you, and you're not going to be the last one. There's somebody that's going to come behind you. And are you clearing a big enough path to make it easier for them to follow in your footsteps? Or are you cutting a small trail and not leaving signs so that people can't follow you? One thing that we need to get really, really good at is showing the diversity of everyone winning. And the reason why that's so important is because right now, and actually not just right now, but for a very long time now, all we've heard is the diversity of how everybody's losing. Guys, there are plenty of people out there winning right now. There's plenty of people watching and listening to this right now that are winning. 
share that with other people. You know, normally towards the end of the month, you see us pouring in with promotions to show everybody that it's possible. Make sure that you're using that to help promote to other people that guess what? People are winning and you can win too. I want to help you win. Are you willing to work the grind so that you can have what it is you want? The thing that she said was so mind blowing was that most successful people aren't in love with the glamour of the things that you get of success. They are in love with the grind and the process. So fall in love with the process, fall in love with the grind and the glamour will end up following that. So the last two things that I have of my seven pages of notes is be relentless in reinventing yourself because your permission to do that is within you. That permission isn't from anybody else. That permission to be relentless and reinvent yourself comes from inside of you. And set up for yourself a relentless drive for excellence. Because when you have a relentless drive for excellence, you will land in the success zone and get the goals and dreams that you've set out for yourself. So guys, make sure you go back and check this one out again. This was awesome. We're so glad that you were on with us today. We'll see you again next time. Have a good day.